So maybe you can yeah. tell me which all colleges you are doing outreach in, because I believe Georgia Tech is one of the most prominent universities in America. So maybe which all colleges you are doing outreach in for how many years? What is the nature of that? Is it like a once a week program? Maybe we can start with some, have some specifics. I'll give a clear well, uh We currently are very active at Georgia Tech, uh, University of Georgia, Kennesaw State, Emory University, Georgia State University. And we also have some presence at Agnes Scott, which is an all girls college. And all, all girls college. All girls college, yes. Okay. So then, you, then go, you go there or you send somebody else there on your behalf? No, no, I go. I take some of my other senior girl students. Okay. To assist. So we are a big family. So students from Georgia Tech will go to other universities, other university students will go. So we all work together as a team. This is not a one man show. Although there is no temple devotees who are involved, I'm the only temple devotee who's involved, but the whole thing is operated and managed by the college students. So, and then we have it in Tennessee as well. We have it in Middle Tennessee State University, which is the biggest university in Tennessee. Okay. We have a very, very active club there. And we have some roots in Alabama as well. University of Alabama in Tuscaloosa. We have a club there. And there's a group of Marines who are heading up that club. And it's really nice. So that means totally six or seven universities? Yes. So then you physically go and do programs every week there or these are more, now of course because of the pandemic they're virtual, digital, but how are you managing all these programs? So, you know, five days a week, I'm in, a, I'm in five different universities wow. in the evenings. Okay. And then, and then uh, I also have senior students who are, you know, following strictly the four regulative principles, chanting 16 rounds. We don't say 16 rounds, we say two hours of meditation, japa meditation. Okay. So once they're at that stage, then we send them out and they go and lead the, less, uh, the, the yoga sessions and the discussions. Okay. So... I was, so when you you speak do primarily yoga exercises and then bring them to spiritual philosophy, or how, how is the bridge that you build between them and us? So the system is we do a lot of yoga asanas because the yoga asanas are very important for breaking down their big massive identities, the false identities, the false egos. You know they're so strong and and so when you do this very intensive yoga asanas, they start to realize the mortality aspect of their existence. How does that happen through yoga asanas? Because when you do an intense yoga asanas, just because you have a strong physique doesn't mean you're going to be able to do the pose. So it requires you to really battle with your body and your mind. And you start to realize, oh my God, I'm actually not that strong or that flexible or all that because we create an image of ourselves of who we are what we look like what we're able to do and what we're not able to do and based on that we project it on the world and and we are always trying to see how to attract the opposite sex so we pump ourselves up and our identities and then when you come into the yoga class you start to realize you can't even touch your toes so you're not all that strong and all that flexible and all this image. So all these things that they cannot do, it starts to break down, physically breaking down their false identity. And this yoga is tremendously powerful. 